Here I'm going to give an introductory discussion of the gradient, the divergence and the curl in vector calculus. First of all we need to introduce some new notation. You'll be familiar with the capital Greek letter delta that takes the form of a triangle sitting on its base, the Greek letter D. Many river deltas have this shape and that's why they're called deltas. In vector calculus we take this symbol we turn it upside down and we turn the resulting object into a vector, usually a three-dimensional vector, as follows. We give this vector the name del. Sometimes though you'll see it called nabla. That's a rather more old-fashioned name, but you will see it still in many textbooks. Del is far more than just a vector though. It's also an example of something called a differential operator that is, an object which differentiates the things next to it, usually to its right. Del is probably the most fundamental differential operator in vector calculus. It simply has components d by dx, d by dy, and d by dz. So this is what it looks like, in Cartesian coordinates at least. Del does have a slightly different form in polar coordinates but we won't be discussing that here. Well, what can we do with del? It's not really much use by itself. Differentiation instructions need to act on something. The simplest such something we might invent would be a scalar function phi, perhaps depending on x, y and z, a function of three-dimensional position in fact. Let's act with del on such a function phi. what do we expect to get? Well normally when we multiply a vector by a scalar we get another vector. In this case it's going to be the vector whose components are d phi by dx, d phi by dy, and d phi by dz. Turns out this quantity actually has a lot to do with the rate of change of phi at various points in space the gradient of phi in fact. And for that reason it's often called the gradient of phi rather than saying del phi. We sometimes also abbreviate that as grad. In writing grad phi I've underlined the grad to remind us that it's a vector. It really is very important now to underline or at least make some distinguishing mark on your vectors. In vector calculus it's really crucial to be able to quickly identify what compound quantities are vectors and what are scalars. And having some kind of distinguishing mark will help you greatly with that. In a separate maths cast, I've talked about how this quantity is directly related to the directional derivative of the quantity phi. You can view that separately. Here though, it's not my purpose to get distracted with examples. We'll do that in some other screencasts. I want to move on and ask now what happens when del hits a vector? Let's just pick a vector v and assume that it depends on position x, y and z. Such a vector would be called a vector field. It will have three components, v1, v2 and v3 each component also in principle depending on x, y and z. We can hit v with the del operator on its left. But now we've got a product of two vectors, so we need to specify what kind of product it is. There are two available, the dot product and the cross product. Let's start by assuming that this is a dot product. So in making that assumption we can write out the normal expression for a dot product two vectors dotted next to each other. And we know what that should mean. The product of the first component added to the product of the second components and the product of the third components. In this case though, the left hand vector has differential operators for its components, so they will differentiate the things that they hit. The d by dx will hit the v1, 
the d by dy will hit the v2 and so on. It will give us the following expression. Notice that this expression is a scalar. After all, the dot product is also called the scalar product. But it's a scalar containing the sum of derivatives of the respective components. For a vector field v, depending on position in space, this quantity tells you something about how v diverges away from a region or from a point. For that reason, it is also known as the divergence of v. In fact, this is a general feature of the operator del. It has different names depending on the context. If it hits a scalar, it's called the gradient. In the dot product with a vector, it's called the divergence. Divergence is also sometimes abbreviated to div, especially in conversation. Of course, if we can make a dot product, there's no reason why we can't also try to make a cross product. Let's write that out now. It will look like this. The cross product, of course, must give a vector as the answer. And we know how to construct that vector. We can do it with a 3 by 3 determinant in the usual way. We just put the components of the two vectors in the usual places. Notice that here I've used a, an abbreviated form for the derivatives with suffices x, y and z instead of writing d by dx and so on. That's a not uncommon thing to do in this determinant just to save space and make it a bit less cluttered. The evaluation follows the usual pattern. We have an i part, a j part and a k part. The sign alternates as usual, plus minus plus and the structures in the brackets are the usual structures taken from the 2 by 2 subdeterminants. So for example, for the i component we get dv3 by dy minus dv2 by dz. The other components follow similarly, so I'll just write them in now. Here's the final result. This quantity is often associated with the swirling effect or rotational effect of a vector about a point or a region. For that reason it is given the name the curl of V. Be aware that as the curl is a cross product it is a vector formed from differentiating the components of V in a special way. What we've seen up to now are the three basic uses of the del operator involving first derivatives. Of course, we can use the del operator more than once in a line. In particular, we often see it dotted with itself, del dot del. The result now is going to involve second derivatives. There's nothing to differentiate on the right here. But I'm not worried about that at the moment, I just want to construct the operator. We can do it in the usual way for a dot product, multiplying the first, second and third components and adding the result. Here's what we get. In fact, it's just the sum of the second derivatives, a scalar quantity as it should be for a dot product. This is a very common quantity in physics and engineering. It's named after the French mathematician Laplace and is called the Laplacian but we also sometimes just write it as del squared, now without the vector symbol on the del, to show that it's a scalar. The Laplacian operator is an extremely important one in physics. It occurs all over the place, in studies of the flow of heat, di uh, the uh, diffusion of materials, in electromagnetism, in quantum mechanics, and in its four-dimensional version where it's known as the D'Alembertian also as in, in relativity and in relativistic quantum mechanics. The Laplacian even crops up in economics for example in the area known as the black skulls equations which in a very naive sense describe how the values of options diffuse in and out of the economic environment. Functions which give zero when the Laplacian is applied to them are known as harmonic functions. They tend to be very important functions, particularly in complex analysis. At this point we've covered the most fundamental things about the operator del, but I just want to show you a couple of other places 
and contexts in which it might occur. It is possible to have the vector on the left of the del, something like v dot del. It would look like this. Here it's really important to make sure the v1, v2 and v3 go on the left. They're not getting differentiated. What gets differentiated is whatever might be on the right of the expression. This combination occurs, for example, in fluid mechanics in the study of the viscous flow of fluid. Some equations called the Navier-Stokes equations contain an operator of this kind. Of course, if we can make a dot product in this way, there's nothing to stop us also making a cross product. I'm going to leave you to work out what that one must look like. Just do it in the usual way using a determinant and expect to have the v's on the left and the ultimate answer will be a vector in the form of a differential operator acting to its right. Finally, before we close, I just want to address something that you might have noticed that I skipped over. I skipped over it for a very definite, clear reason, because it's essentially trivial. You might have wondered what happens if we try and do del cross del. Well, you should remember from elementary vector studies that the cross product of two identical vectors is always zero. That's the same here. It doesn't matter that these things are differential operators. We still get zero. If you don't believe it, set up the expression using determinant and you'll see it coming out. It remains for us to do some examples with some specific functions phi and v. But that really needs to be done in a separate place.